Welcome to Straight Talk here on Ramadan TV once again this week. Um, as always, we're going to have a normal topic of the week as well as having a look at all of the latest that's happening around the world. But remember to stay tuned to Straight Talk or indeed any of the programs here on Ramadan TV. Download the app, which is Ramadan TV Scotland. You can also stay in touch on YouTube as well as Facebook and all other main platforms on social media. My name is Shibana Naz and with me, of course, as every week is my partner in crime, Dr. Nigat Riaz. But let's move to our first guest of the week. As we'd mentioned earlier, it was, um, it's Mr. Safaz Ali, all the way from Birmingham. He is a social entrepreneur and is the founder uh, of the Head Pathway Group, which is a leading skills provider um, in changing and the uh, who have the vision and are the provider as well, in fact, of the Changing Lives Through Skills and Work program. So um, th this is somebody that we were mentioning earlier. Baji is going to be hopefully uh, giving us some more information on what he thinks is the best way to move forward in these times when it comes to business. Mm -hmm. uh, I was going to add before we, we speak to Safraz is that he's very well renowned through not just the West Midlands, through, through most of England. Um, He's asked to judge on many platforms for the UK Government National Apprenticeship Awards. Mm -hmm. uh, as a social entrepreneur, he's involved in many parts of his business which deal with, um, with the care system, with fostering, and it's something that we, we should perhaps invite him back to talk about in another episode. Mm -hmm. But, you know, he takes a lot of roles on a, on a voluntary basis um, as he sees the difference that such events can have an encouraging um, entrepreneurship and leadership um, and he, he really is a role model for, for small business and encouraging them with create, uh, creative vision and growth. Um, amongst everything else he does, he's found time to become an, an author. He's published three books. My goodness. He's working on his fourth. I haven't got one published yet. I'm a little bit envious, <laughs> um, but you know, uh, he sent me a few, um, two of them, and they, they are very, very good. It's about business wisdom tips and um, how to attract uh, and support staff to stay within your organisation was the latest one. Um, overall, he is an advocate of social justice and entrepreneurship and about making a difference in people's lives. So, um, welcome, sir. Thank you so much, both of you. Much, much appreciated. Uh, thank you, Dr. Riaz, Shibana. I thank can listen to both of you all day. Very, very <laughs> lightening and uh, engaging conversation there. Thank you so much, both of you. Thank you very much. And thank you for joining us. Um, like Baji said, you've got a lot to tell us, a lot of... And, and she's envious of you writing books. So am I. I've been wanting to write a book for years and I've never done it. So um, well done to that and, yeah. and, uh, and all of your achievements. I was going to say, just before we start on the main conversation, you put up a really interesting article on LinkedIn this morning <laughs> where you, where you um, put, um, yeah. you, you described the, the I UK Westminster. Yeah. I was being a bit mischievous there, Dr. Yaz. I mean, I, I got up quite early this morning and uh, obviously from my uh, yesterday's news, I just I was just trying to work out where we are and, and so forth and and, and I'm uh, uh, you know m most of my thinking is you know particularly TV shows are back in 1970s and 80s and so forth and uh, so the original Star Trek uh, uh, William Shatner that that sort of Star Trek is is uh, is I was a bit of a fan of that so I was trying to put an analogy in terms of. Uh, well, you you went back and even further than the 1970s. That's the 1960s. The 60s, and 60s even, yeah. Well, there's all repeats. So it's called constantly, on, constantly, on repeat, constantly on a repeat there. And uh, and I said Boris Johnson, as you would probably expect, is Captain uh, uh, Captain Kirk. And, uh, and and then you have the Chief Medical Officer, uh, uh, Professor Christopher Whitty. You know, he's more like the Spock. 
character. And then uh, you've got the uh, chief scientist officer, Patrick Valance, Sir Patrick Valance. He's, uh, he's, uh, 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 he's the McCoy character. And I'll go into a little bit of that just to give you a little bit of understanding what, what, the, what the thinking is. And then uh, you've got the chancellor, Rishi Sunak, who's, uh, who's, the, uh, uh, who's Scotty. Uh, you must, you know, you might have been <laughs> beaming up Scotty. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm sure he'll love to be compared with that. I'm sure that will make him happy. <laughs> so my, my analogy is that Captain, Cap, you know, Captain Kirk, he's the one that wants to listen to all of them. You know, he just likes to be liked. Uh, he wants an easy life. He just he just wants to get on with these things, and uh, uh, he's not a man for too much detail. So he's he obviously relies on his advisors who who talk about you know the the detail, and he just wants to do the right thing and and, and 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 just move on really. And what you've got what you've got is a lot of pressure from from both parties, the chief medical officer, the chief scientist officer, plus the party members, putting a lot of pressure on him and he's he's, he's a bit overwhelmed by all the pressure and, and what to do and then he's looking afar rather than his own uh, his own uh, sort of side and his own team, he's looking at um, other other captains. So what what I mean by that is the uh, other countries, France and, and Germany, in terms of what they're doing, and if they if they had to make a move, then then he feels he doesn't feel too bad. So he thinks that uh, you know, as long as we're we're in the same boat, it, it doesn't look it doesn't it, it's not too bad. It's like sometimes when your kids come home and they think, you know, it's not me who just got the the fail. Everybody else got a fail, and it's it's for, because of that we're mm-hmm. we're okay. So but, but, that, they're, not that's, okay. that's, but that's, they're not okay. That's the whole <laughs> issue. We are so not okay right now. So uh, yeah. So you got you got Spock coming you. You got Christopher Whitty, who's who's the logical guy. He looks at the data. He looks at the facts and figures, and he's basically saying, based on these facts and figures, we need to take action. And he's probably been saying that for a while. And and, uh, and 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 so he's not a really likable guy. He's you know he's yeah he just he's got that one. One one sort of uh, view, and, and he just looks at it from that data analysis perspective, and and everybody else thinks that he doesn't understand the bigger picture because he's just focused on one thing, uh, sort of a one trick pony. So you know he gets beaten up by the scientist officer who tries to sort of he tries to sort of think you know what what's good for the country and so forth. So there's a lot of a lot of maneuvering going on, mm-hmm. and then you have. Um, uh, Rishi Sunak, who's uh, who's beaming up Scotty, Lieutenant Scotty. He's uh, he likes to be loved, and he you know he, he did you know he's you know he's he's in the good books generally with people at the moment because he's done a lot of financial help and support. I mean, if, there's some people that have missed out, but majority try to catch them all in terms of the financial support. And he you know he wants to be in a position where he can he can uh, drum up some magic and, and and give some magic beans and, and help everybody read along. So that was my analogy. It was on, on, on I like the magic I was, I, was, I, was, yeah. I was having a little bit of fun, really. Yeah. So my main message was that, you know what, to a certain level, yeah, you know, Dr. Riaz, you are right. That, you know, it, it is a very serious topic. And, and uh, you know, we are talking about people's lives here. And, and, uh, and there's, there's a lot of people that have been affected. And maybe they could have, you know, could have, you, know you, you have different views there. And, and you know, we're not all, we're always going to agree. But for me, it's... Yeah, to a certain level, it's the right intention. Intention is the everything. You know, we start with intention. If the if it's the right intention, then then you know you might not get the right result. But it's where 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 you start from, really. Um, to a certain level, you, you know, it's easy for me to say, but it's dumb if you do and dumb if you don't. Really, it's it's one of these that you never you're never going to win. But that's my take on it. It's an interesting one. Um... <laughs> Going back to the questions then, um, yeah. you're, you're a very influential business leader in the West Midlands and beyond. Um, first question, who were your role models uh, and mentors and what qualities did you admire in them? Uh, and how many of those did you take on board as you've developed your business plan uh, over the last 20 years? I think with all of us really, there's a lot of people that, uh, that influence you, that affect you. Uh, and, and I would say many people have shaped shaped my life uh, throughout your life. So, you know, it's easy for me to say, you know, this business person or this, you know, Richard Branson and so forth. These are, you know, yeah, of course, they're influential people, but we're, we're affected mainly by people we surround ourselves predominantly by. So you start off with your family, you start off with people who are close to you. But, you know, what you find is that there will always be, and, and these mentors and, and role models change. You know, at school, it might have been, 
the 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 the, uh, the boy who sort of don't, uh, does well in chemistry, and you want to try and emulate him a little bit, and then it's it you know the, it changes. So you know, I wouldn't say there's any role model that you'll have for life. Um, you know, apart from maybe your your, your parents, or so you know, we all you know, look up to our fathers and 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 uh, and, and, and uh, mothers and in terms of the, the the wider family because they've lived a different life to us in terms of uh, you know how they've. they've they, they, you know, they came into the into the UK and and, and the, the struggles and the challenges that they've had. So obviously, you, you know, you've you've got to you've got to you know you've, you've got to put that uh, on, on a different pedestal. But generally, I'm talking about people that will influence you and they'll take you to the next stage. And you'll find a mentor or an influencer that will take you wherever wherever it is. So it depends on where you are in your life. So in your workplace, you'll have somebody in your workplace that you can you can learn from, and that might be just from looking at from a distance. It may be people that you know are in your profession that you can read about, read about, you know, maybe read their articles, look at their videos, look at you know maybe podcasts and so forth. So it's it's an evolving uh, situation. So you, I wouldn't necessarily put everybody in the same category to say, you know what, well, these are superheroes or these are your mentors. And, and I think we need to be flexible in terms of how we look at people and, and what we can learn from. I also try and look at skills and traits. So, for example, I might say, you know what, you know, the, Dr. Riaz, he's got a brilliant way of, 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 of relaxing people and, and, and uh, very down to earth and, you know, maybe I'm a little bit uptight and so forth. So, you know what, maybe maybe that's a characteristics that I really do admire and, and, and pick up. So these are the sort of things that you can learn from in terms of skills and trades. Somebody might be very good in terms of digital. Somebody might be very good in terms of the presentations. You know, public speaking is not an easy thing. So you might say, you know what, this person does public speaking so well. They're so relaxed. You know, they've got a natural uh, charisma about themselves. Can I, can I, you know, can, is that something that I can pick up and can pick up and learn from as well? So I'm just so going to, to sorry, I'm just going to interrupt you there. Um, Surprise, baby. we'll get you back just after the short break. We need to go to a short break at the moment. We will be back on the other side of this, so make sure you're st you stay tuned to Straight Talk here on Ramadan TV. Hello and welcome back to Straight Talk here on Ramadan TV with myself Shabana Naz and Dr. Nigat Riaz. Just, on, uh, just previously, before we went on a break, we were talking to Mr. Safraz Ali, who was telling us all about how to survive, how businesses are to survive during the times of COVID. Um, we'll have him back with us. Um, so we'll take him back. I'm here, thank you so much. Thank you for still being here. I know we've had you on for a while and you're probably getting oh, bored by us by now. So, um, But we love your anecdote, the special one at the beginning <laughs> about what you had to put up with Star Trek. Um, I'm, I'm sure all the leaders will be loving that at the moment, especially being compared to, what was it, Mr. Captain, Spock? Ca Captain, Captain Kirk. Kirk. Spock. The thing is, Boris Johnson actually is very similar to Captain Kirk because of his womanizing ways, his <laughs> wandering <laughs> eyes, and multiple children. So, yeah. Multiple <laughs> children? Oh, my goodness. He's a, he's a charmer, but... Yeah. <laughs> That's one way of saying it. You can tell uh, Badi Nugget is quite a dating person. She, she says what she thinks. But oh, I'm, too, I'm too old to just <laughs> pretend to be nice anymore. I know, I know. But... Here's another question for you, Mr. Uh, Faz. I was wondering, um, with all the industries that are out there at the moment, yeah. which ones do you think? Which one do you think is uh, probably suffering the most, or is struggling the most to, like you, in your own words, strive, thrive, and survive, if I may, or, or yeah. die even? Yeah, yeah. And what I, what I will say, uh, Shibana, if I may, is that you know we're far from over in terms of this crisis, um, and you know we we you know you know. Any guest that's out there, or any any sort of expert that that's out there, where you know normality or getting back to normal, we just don't know how long this is going to take. Yeah. But what we can say is that you know the 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 the, the work that's happened, into, particularly in terms of the world, the world of digitalization, all that is is acceleration of something that was already happening anyway. So it's a trend. So we were going down the route of digitalization uh, very much anyway in terms of uh, IT digital industries. And really, it's just accelerated that's been a catalyst in terms of that particular aspect of it. Um, and, and that's, in a nutshell, where it is, you know, overnight businesses, 
uh, individuals that are digital uh, friendly, digital natives, they're the ones that have, have, have done generally well. So, you know, if you in your work are very much a laptop person, you know, you can work from anywhere, then really it hasn't affected your, 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 your general work, apart from maybe possibly uh, the people around you, you know, men from a mental health perspective, but generally in terms of actually conducting work, you know, you, you haven't really suffered. And it's, it's, it's people who are predominantly face-to-face. -face. So, you know, uh, and a lot of what we, what we call blue-collar workers, uh, people who, who are working frontline, um, they're the ones who are, who are suffering. And anybody who is more in terms of office type, you know, what, what we call traditionally white-collar workers, in that sort of sector, they generally, from a career perspective, haven't actually... Um, uh, been affected too much, um, and, and in some cases, it's an element of learning some digital digital tools. So some people may not have used Teams before, or Zoom before, or some of these sort of uh, applications. But generally, they're computer savvy, they're IT savvy, and, and all they've done is really moved very quickly, mobilised onto onto these platforms. Mm -hmm. Use Microsoft Teams, Microsoft Office 365, uh, Zoom. These sort of these sort of tools, and they've really been able to be, be fairly agile in terms of moving across because they've got the core skills. And when you've got these core skills in terms of communication, IT, those sort of levels, then you're able to move fairly fairly quickly. And it's individuals that haven't got those that unfortunately have been have, have, have stuck. In terms of generally businesses, if I if I if I may call it, might say. Uh, businesses, uh, you know, big hit, big the the, the aviation, you know, it's been a disaster in terms of the aviation industry. So we've lost all sector of industries that have just been more or less been wiped out. Hospitality, uh, anybody in that sector really has suffered. Some of the hotel sector, uh, again, you know, restaurants have 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 suffered. Um, you know, the hell uh, hospitality industry as a whole, or even within that, there's some aspects of of of, of of those industries that have done well, takeaways, uh, I think you call them carry outs, they've done really well in, in, some as, in some aspects of it. So for, for me, it's, you know, it's, it's um, uh, and then you can put it into, as I said, you know, I, I, you know I've, I've mentioned uh, uh, previously in terms of the three categories. I mean, that's still, you know, simplification really to a certain level. So, uh, you know, there are businesses that have done really well. Anybody, any business that got a, has got an online business, uh, you know that that, uh, that sells their products and and, and services online. Um, uh, you know they they're finding that you know their business has really gone through the roof in some aspects of it. So if you're an Amazon seller, eBay, uh, you know you've got a website online, you've got a you've got a uh, e-shop and pro products online. You know you, you know you, you you probably have done quite well. Uh, anybody in the warehouse and logistics sector, they've done really well. Uh, a lot of the shops, are, I would say, for you know. Uh, again, customer facing, I've, I've probably you know I've have, have, have struggled. Uh, I mean, advisors, you've got you know the, the likes of the accountants and the solicitors. Uh, you know, they're the people that you tend to turn to uh, in these times. Of, and I think they've done um, pretty well out of this as well. So you know, you can start categorizing in terms of you know has this business is it, are they just surviving? You know, have they really taken off? Are they thriving? Or have the business is completely plummeted and, and diving? And I think. That's a, again generalisation, but you know you can start pigeonholing in terms in terms of that particular category as well. But it's been you know overall, it's, you know you know you, you have people in each and every single category, so we can't say generally that everybody has suffered. And at the same time, you can't really generalise to say some people are you know are, are doing well. It depends on the sector. It depends on you know where you are as an organisation. And and most organisations, even if they weren't IT uh, or digital. They've, they've had to go that way. They've had to start thinking about that way and, and, and thinking, you know, this is a new norm. We've got to move fairly quickly. Get on, on get on this track. Uh, otherwise, you're going to be left behind. And that gap in terms of the people who are being left behind is getting wider and wider and wider. You know, we keep talking about the, the divide between rich and rich and poor, um, but there's a big divide in terms of skill sets now, in terms of social mobility. Uh, people who, you know. You know, are on the first rung of ladder, and, and the, the individuals who are um, uh, more adaptable to, to that change, and that gap is is bigger and bigger.
Could I just ask how easy has it been for you as a CEO of Pathway Group and tell tell us what actually Pathway Group does? How how easy has it been for you as an organization to adapt uh, and change your practices uh, as you've moved through COVID to this point in time over the last eight months? So Mr. Shabana mentioned earlier on the fact that you know we're an organisation that believes that believes in changing lives through skills and work. What that actually means is we're a, you know you know we're slightly more than a training provider. We're a welfare to work provider, and we're also uh, an, an organisation that helps people in different parts of it. So and we categorise ourselves in terms of doing three things really, and we say A, B, C. So you know, firstly, getting people a job. That's the first thing. So the, the first entry into a job, you know, we also help people getting a better job. So that, that's the B, you know, so they're already on the career, but they want to, we want to progress them onto, uh, onto the career ladder. So maybe that's level two qualification, going onto a level three qualification and, and progress them onto, on, onto the career ladder. That could also be, uh, to a certain level, reskilling them, uh, reskilling people. And then we help people, you know, with careers. So, you know, that could be uh, sort of a, a situation where they've been made redundant or they're looking at changing career paths and moving, moving them onto a career. So it's all work and skills related. So getting them a job, a better job and a career is, is predominantly what we're about. You know, we're an organization focused. You know, we started in Birmingham, um, you know, 20, 20 years ago and we've started, expanded to the northwest uh, in, in England and also uh, in the greater London area. And we, we have our offices and centres and we, we sometimes have referrals from job centres as well. And we also have individuals that, that might come to us um, to, uh, to take on a qualification. In terms, of, um, in, t in terms of our clients, again, we're dealing with people who are, you know, uh, fairly far removed from the job market. So, you know, these are the individuals that are slightly what we call harder to reach, individuals that may not have, uh, you know, that may not have done qualifications before, you know, may not have uh, functional skills, you know, English and maths, you know, they may not be operating, or they may be looking to get into a career. So it's, it's those people, you know, the first job or, you know, the you know, first qualification. Um, and then we've got individuals who are more into the career path. So we, we've seen both sides of it as well. So the individuals who are far further removed from the job market, you know, you're never going to get that person um, on, on, on Zoom and, and, and sort of, because they need a lot of support and training. And these are courses that, you know, it's like, you know, going to a college and, you know, and, and, you know it's going to take you a year to, or probably even longer to, to learn how to operate a mouse or, or even navigate on screen and, and so forth. You're not going to learn, learn those skills overnight. So they're the, the individuals that we haven't been able to assist to the level that we have. But in other cases where we're doing maybe a course with somebody who's doing a management qualification, mm -hmm. they're easily, for, for us, we're able to replicate whatever we were doing online. In some cases, you know, the, those individuals have been thankful because it saves their time. They're able to do what we call on-demand learning. So just as we've got with Netflix, you know, we, you know, we now choose when we want to watch and how we want to watch it and whether we want to watch for 10 minutes or 15 minutes or an hour, you know, that, that choice is now with us, it's on-demand learning. So you you want to be in a position where you know you chop you you know you learn as you as you wish really and, and, and as you go along. So those individuals they've actually uh, you know have have actually taken advantage of the fact that it's more flexible. It's more uh, at, at, at their uh, pleasure really at their request. And uh, those individuals have, have really uh, taken taken advantage of that. So it's been a mixed bag really in terms of in terms of that, if I may. So that's obviously you've discussed how possibly to get somebody who's wanting to come into uh, work and then progress from there on uh, with career progression. But people who, have, who are actually in a business at the moment or in a job at the moment, what would you suggest and on, on, on how they should go about sort of moving on further from where they are now in terms of, well, in light of COVID and the way things are, like you said before, it doesn't look like anything's going to change anytime soon. I mean, the, uh, it is a very evolving market at the moment. There's a lot of change that's going on, and what we're finding is that you know you've got a uh, um, yeah, there's an element of people focusing on their career and focusing on their business. So in terms of the business world, it is about understanding what's going on, being lean, agile, responsive, um, uh, being able to take advantage of opportunities. Um, uh, uh, talking to the right people. 
So, you know, we are a combination of the people that are around us and, and to a certain level, you know, having having those individuals that you can go and get advice from is absolutely important. So having a, having a sort of a bubble, uh, if I may call it, that, that can, then you can bounce ideas from, you know, you know we, we can't think of everything ourselves. Um, and, you know, you need people that you can actually learn from as well that are going to push you in the right direction. And, and I think that's important in terms of who you who that support. Uh, I, mean, I mean, I don't want to use the support bubble because there's a, obviously the government definition of the support bubble, but that support structure there, you know, your your uh, your um, uh, mentors or coaches that uh, you can look at uh, from a family perspective, from a, from a, uh, from a colleagues and friends perspective, absolutely vital as well. I think you also need to be fairly clear in terms of your own, in, 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 from your perspective as well, that we can only control what we can control. And, and there's certain things that are not in your control, and and uh, and you've got to focus in terms of, you know, step at a time as well. So in, in any in any aspect of it, when you when you're looking at any problem or any 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 issue from a critical solving issue, you've got to break, break it down into bite sizes, and and if you look at it, you know, from a from a bigger perspective, then I think we 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 sometimes get overwhelmed ourselves. You know, it gets too much. And I think you've got to break it down one chunk at a time, one step at a time, and and really have be hopeful. You know, you you, you know you can never lose hope. You've got to be optimistic, but also at the same time be aware, be emotionally savvy, emotionally aware in terms of you know you know what to you know. It's first thing. The first thing is knowing what you don't know, and knowing the fact that you know you may not have full knowledge of this. That awareness level is absolutely vital. So being aware. Um, uh, and being in a position in terms of understanding what you don't know and being able to then go and find that. So we don't have to have all the answers. Uh, it's like now you don't have to have all the answers, but what you do need to know is how to go about getting those answers and what to go and do. That's why we call, you know, this is what this is why we have Google. That you know, you and, and other other tools out there. You know, you don't have to have you don't have to have it all here, but you have to know how to go and find it and what to do with it and and how to go and get that information and 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 implement and action that information. That's the skill set I think we all need and breaking things down into into levels that are actionable. And I think they they generally I'm talking general advice, but whether you're a you know whether you're a student or whether you're a business person, you know that I think generally uh, you know in general terms that's 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 the way I would say to go to go about doing this. Could could I add something? Here? There there's increasing levels of mental illness because of COVID, because of isolation. What kind of advice would you give to businesses and employees on how to navigate uh, feeling low, feel, you know, those feelings of isolation uh, on how they move forward until we come out of the second stage of lockdown? I think, uh, I think this is a topic that, you know, we, you know we, we've all, it's become common language now in terms of mental health and so forth. Um, you know, there's a word in terms that, that's also quite common now called resilience and being able to deal with things and that basically means uh, dealing with uh, uh, failure, dealing with problems, overcoming certain battles and, and, uh, and I, think, I think this is where you, know, you, you have to have the, an element of, uh, of being able to uh, put it into perspective and this perspective is the key. When we lose perspective, you know, we get overwhelmed, uh, we get inundated, we, you know, we get very um, um, restless unsure ourselves and then we lose track of what, what's important when one you know it's about doing things at the right time in the right way in the right place and that is absolutely in a nutshell that's what it is and then what happens is that we get uh, we, we get lost you know and in, in, in the get frustrated it's like you're 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 in your car and, and you know you, you you've got lost and you know and, and then all of a sudden it's it's the worst thing ever and you get so frustrated in, in a nutshell, really, it's not too bad. All you've done is you're slightly late, uh, but you know you just got to calm yourself down a little bit and have it perspective. It's not, it's not that important. It's not the end of the world. Just put yourself in a perspective, relook at it, refocus, and just get back on on the track in terms of where you need to be. 
Um, it's really simple, I mean, it's in, in, in terms of, you know, what I'm saying, you know, and every person to a certain level has a different view on it, different perspective. I mean, we don't know what, what other, another person's going through, and I think it's, it's you know, it, you know, uh, you know, it, you know, when people say, uh, uh, blase comments like, you know, get over it and, 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 and cheer up and so forth, these are, these things are not that helpful, helpful, and I think for us just to have that awareness to say, you know, it's not about, you know, smiling or laughing, and it's not about you know, you know de-stressing. These mm -hmm. these are longer-term things, and 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 be more mindful. I think that's the key in terms of how somebody might be feeling. You know, we don't know. You know, sitting here, what other what somebody else is going through, what the pressures are. You know, they might be a little smiley and so forth, but you never know what's going what's going through somebody's mind, what's what's going through somebody's head. And I think it's just being aware yourself the fact that. To, you know, you know, just be extra mindful in terms of, uh, you know, how you approach people, how you how you talk to people, and and, uh, and kindness um, uh, is something that you know is is, is something basic, but you know, you, uh, it, it's something that will help everybody in any any situation wherever you can. Uh, okay. That's just a generalization. Yeah, it brings the new meaning to faking it until you're making it. So sometimes it's useful, sometimes not so much. Yeah. yeah. No, that was that was very interesting. Um, just before you go, however, um, what would be for um, those people out there who are who are really, uh, you know, at their lowest point at the moment and how to basically pick themselves up now because. There are, a people, there are a lot of people now, especially since the second wave of lockdown has come in, um, who, are, who are in an extremely bad position. But how would you, what would you suggest to them in terms of picking themselves up and getting back into work again? Yeah, I mean, so for some people, they may be feeling that these are dark days, uh, you know, the, the, the world is about to end and so forth. Uh, you know, what I would say, sun always comes up eventually, uh, even after the darkest night. You know, it, it's it's uh, you know, you've got to you've got to keep hopeful. You've got to uh, remain hopeful. Uh, yes, there are challenges, whether that's in work, whether that's in um, your your business. Um, I think your support structure absolutely vital. Um, you know, one of the first things is being able to. Um, Understanding yourself, you know, in terms of where we are. I think, you know, sometimes we 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 we're, you know, we're in denial in terms of where, you know where we are. Where, you know, where uh, you know what, what I would call blame. You know, uh, below the line. So you know, a lot of blame, excuses. This is per, this person's fault, or you know, or uh, sometimes you know, you know, it could be a delusional type of thinking or in denial. And acceptance is the first thing. When you accept something, then you're in a position to move forward. And it's really understanding. The facts and, 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 and knowing what we know, and you know, and, and is that with certainty and breaking that down in terms of you know we know this, but we've got fear of this as well. And sometimes fear is our biggest worry. The the whole aspect of worrying about something is a bigger worry. You know, the fear of this is going to happen or this is going to happen, and this is a lot of this is about false expectations, and you know, in, in reality, it may not never happen. And, you know, as I said before, is you know you can only control what you can control, and and the certain things that you are not in your control at all. Um, and and you know if you've got a false expectations that you know appear real, then you're in a position where it's just a cycle, complete cycle as well. You've got to come out of that in terms of actually working out you know the pros and you know the, the positives and negatives, the pros and cons, and really trying to break that down. If that if that for you is writing it down on a piece of paper. Then, then do that. If that for you is talking to somebody else, then then, then then do that. You know, you've got to find what's right for you, what's best for you. Um, you know, and and, and and take everything in in your stride as much as you can. You know, one step at a time, um, and and, uh, and and just remain positive. Chin up. And do the best that we can. I like that. Chin up. I know Martin yeah. just went up there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, chin Thank up. you so much. Just <laughs> can. Thank you so much, Safraz. It's lovely speaking to you. Take care. Thank you so much. Thank you.